Good afternoon. Thank you for giving me a few moments of your time to go over some exciting learning opportunities revolving around our instructional technology program here at Arrowhead Elementary School. My name is Jack Babcock. I'm the instructional technology specialist full-time here at Arrowhead Elementary. There are many different instructional technology pieces being utilized on a regular basis. So many, in fact, I cannot go into detail on all of them. I have provided a list which includes many, but not all, with quite a few of the instructional tech pieces being used here at Arrowhead. We're using Achieve 3000 and Core Clicks. They're programs that are used for reading instruction based on student reading level. We're also using 10 Marks, which again does the same thing as the two reading programs, only this one's based in math. We use programs such as the Tech for Learning Suite, like Pixie. Pixie allows students to draw and create images. Then they can take those images and import them into other programs, such as EduCreations or other items. We do use the Active Expressions, which are handheld devices. Those handheld devices allow teachers to receive instant feedback. For example, students can do math, addition, subtraction, multiplication. They can do other items such as quick prompt questions to where they can just get a quick snapshot as to exactly where the students are and what they're understanding. Teachers are also beginning to use YouTube videos. They're creating them and uploading them into our Arrowhead YouTube channel where students and parents can actually view for homework help and or additional assistance at home. We use programs through Virginia Beach such as the Defined STEM program. Various iPad apps, Show Me, EduCreations, Toontastic, ChatterPix, Seesaw, and many others. And finally, we're going to be moving into a new chapter here at Arrowhead using the Google Apps for Education, which has been set up division-wide through Virginia Beach. And that's what teachers are going to be learning about within the next few weeks. I just wanted to give you a pr brief rundown about a couple of the programs so the first thing that we're going to look at is Achieve 3000, and that's being used in our gr grades 3 through 5 classes. Achieve 3000 allows students to read a lesson, and they are all nonfiction based. They do a pre-poll. It's just a quick question. Some kids in Alaska traded places. K city kids went to the country. Country kids went to the city. The kids learned how they were alike and different. What do you think? And students need to agree or disagree, and then provide an answer why. They then read the actual article, and the article is based on their reading level, so some are smaller, some are larger. And I'll just give you an example. That's a, a, a medium size, and then a smaller one would look something similar to this right here. Not sure why it's not loading. Go down to a larger one and you can see the difference. Okay, And then after they do that, sometimes there are charts for them to have to answer questions about, read on, and then they actually ask, uh, answer questions based on the activity that's provided. Now these are all activity questions that are based on their reading level again, so some students have eight, some students have four questions to answer. That's just a brief rundown of what's going on with students using Achieve 3000. We also have a program called Core Clicks, and Core Clicks is the same thing similar to Achieve, only it's actually for our K2. Grades 3 through 5 have access to it, but we push it on grades uh, K1 and 2 here at Arrowhead Elementary School. We've been feeling it out with some of the um, individual classes first. So a student can <clears throat> click on one of the assigned activities that have been assigned by the teacher. And then there is reading involved. I need to allow the pop-up. Okay. So with this particular activity, there's reading involved, and the nice thing about Core Clicks is it will actually read to them as well. It doesn't read the questions to them, but it does read the articles, which is nice assistance for our K-1-2, especially our students that are struggling. While this is loading, the next thing that we're going to look at is, oh, never mind, here we go. So lights out, we go ahead, Go to the next slide. Here's the reading function. Speed it up a little bit and hit play.
When the sun goes down, nocturnal animals come out. All right, and then they have to answer questions and go to each slide to do so, <clears throat> and that's a brief rundown of core clicks. So then, after we look at core clicks, we I wanted to show you our ten marks program. And ten marks is the same thing for students uh, in math as it is for reading, just a different program. This one's actually one that we're using, owned by Amazon. So here is our ten marks program. Students answer questions, and after they answer. Uh, a variety of questions that will then assign work to them. The nice thing about 10 marks is it will show them videos for hints <clears throat> and they can watch these videos prior to answering the question because remember this is all these are all activities that students will do on their own independently in computer centers. This lesson describes the attributes to We're skipping through so you can see what some of them look like. Both can come in different sizes and colors. All right, so that's 10 marks. Let's move on a little bit. I do apologize for the speed, but I wanted to fit a couple more activities in that students have been working on or teachers have been using for students. One of them is our YouTube channel. <clears throat> the Arrowhead Elementary School uh, YouTube channel, which is available. It's live. You can all see it. We you show that we have 680 views for various videos at this point, which is nice. I mean, it's not... Uh, uh, we just started, so it's, it's pretty nice to see we've have, we have that type of involvement. I've created two different uh, playlists for students so that they can just see videos created by Mrs. Davis, one of our fourth grade teachers, and videos created by Mrs. Gross. And again, these are all various videos designed to help them with either homework or something that they're doing in the classroom. Sometimes these videos are used in conjunction with Nearpod. So let me just show you a quick uh, video that Mrs. Gross has uploaded. Hi, this is Miss Gross here. Um, for homework tonight, uh, the day is December 21st, 2015. For homework tonight, we sent home and Let's get past a little bit so you can okay, see some of the... There we what go. number is in the hundreds place? I'm going to look over and I'm going to say I know that seven's in the tens, three is in the... I'm sorry, seven is in the ones, three is in the tens, and two is in the hundreds place. So, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to write out my hundreds to decide what hundreds. Now one of the nice things is this can be done in a couple different ways. Mrs. Gross has been recording these right in your classroom using the Promethean board and then Mrs. Davis uses another uh, piece of technology called an active slate and the active slate allows her to do it right in front of her laptop to where she doesn't have to be in front of the uh, board itself. So these are all screencast directly from our active inspire software which is part of Promethean. All right, so moving on, I wanted to go in real quick. I'm going to show you a Nearpod activity that was created. This was created by Mrs. Davis. She was our first teacher to start doing these videos, which has been really cool. The students have responded well to this. So I'm going to log into a, an actual Nearpod activity for you to see. And we're not going to do the whole thing, but I do want to just show you a couple uh, slides before we move on to our final piece, which is our Google activity. So the first thing when students log into Nearpod is they have to put their name in. That way the teachers know who student, which student is logging in and which is not. So initially, right away, there's a video for them to watch, and it's going to give them directions on how to do a specific okay, task that Mrs. Davis has taught. To today, again, practice going through how to solve a division problem. So I'm going to skip a little bit okay. so Our you can see. Today Here we go. It's going to be 860. Two divided by four. And then after they've watched the video, there are some activities for them to complete. And they have to follow and do the exact same thing that Mrs. Davis asked them to do. It reminds them of each what uh, step they're on. This is a dad divide step. So students had to <clears throat> put multiples down here and then put the correct answer um, for dad divide up here in the hundreds place right here. And, and the, you know, when you go to the next slide, it's going to show the answer which is nice. And it, every slide shows the previous step's answer. So this is a, uh, an activity called a flipped activity. This is something that Mrs. Davis has uh, been working on for about a month, month and a half. And Mrs. Gross just started picking up on this uh, a couple weeks ago as well. So it's been very exciting. The final piece I wanted to show you here today is our Google Classroom and our Google Apps for Education. We just started this here in Virginia Beach uh, uh, 
few weeks ago, right before winter break actually began, <clears throat> and teachers are going to be uh, introduced to this within the next few weeks here at Arrowhead. So this is actually a Google Chrome classroom that I've set up for teachers to receive some technology, instructional technology updates. And it works in the same way that uh, online courses work, where there's a, a, a stream to where students can receive updates. And then from here, you can add in <clears throat> questions for them to respond to. You can create an assignment for them to download and various other activities. And it does link into other activities or other items through Google. <clears throat> So like I said, it's just a brief rundown. I apologize that I couldn't go into real in-depth. And I do apologize for not being here in person to be able to answer any questions. But feel free to send me an email if you do have any questions. It's jack.babcock at vbschools.com. And of course, my email is on our school website. All right, thank you very much for watching. And again, it was great to talk to you. Have a great day.